Ronnie Floyd is a leader of leaders with a vision to change the world. The Four Leaders Podcast with Ronnie Floyd is committed to investing, inspiring, and influencing your life and leadership today. With a legacy of investing in thousands and thousands of leaders throughout the years who've led in multiple arenas of leadership, now is the time and today is the day for Ronnie Floyd to invest, inspire, and influence you in a serious and responsible way. So spread the news and share the Four Leaders podcast with others around the world. Now, here's your host, Ronnie Floyd. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on the Four Leaders podcast. My name is Ronnie Floyd, and it is a delight that you are joining us today. And I really believe the subject we're going to talk about is something of interest for anyone who listens today. We're going to be talking in just a few minutes about the following subject. Building a family is more important than building a career. Do you believe that? Can those two live together successfully? What does all of this mean? We're going to be talking about all of these matters, many of your questions, and I'm going to give you some practical guidelines and practical things that we need to value in order to be able to accomplish what is the right thing to do uh, as a follower of Christ, if you are, but also according to the Bible and also according to what will really work in your family and in the profession or the vocation that you are in today. But before I do that, I really want to announce to you that this past week, we were able to launch this wonderful devotional book day by day and night by night, 365 morning and evening devotions. And I hope that you will get a copy immediately. The response has already been really strong, over the top. Even before I even came down today to do this podcast, Uh, I got a tremendous report from a friend who shared with me a story of impact. This same person, even yesterday, told me that he was going to purchase copies for both of his children, his daughter-in-law, his wife, and a friend, and also someone he's even renting a home from while he's at the beach. Listen, this is what happens. We have to understand we can share books like this with anyone, people who know Christ, people who do not know Christ. Everyone needs encouragement, and that's what this book is all about. I want to urge you, if you do not have your copy right now, I want to urge you to go to Amazon.com or go to Barnes & Noble, or you can go to Christian Books and secure this. But it's easy to go to Amazon, obviously, because many of you go there over numerous occasions, several times a week for many of you. And I really hope that you will understand the value of being able to have this book every morning. All you do is wake up or at night or during the day, you go to the day, you give it three to five minutes, and you let God put some things in your heart about incredible subjects that we carry and we talk about in this book every day. And so I want to urge you to do that. It's a tremendous gift item. If you're looking for a gift to give someone, if you believe in it, send it to some friends. We've we've sent out hundreds of them um, to share the word and to see the future and to be able to encourage people along the way. And so would you do that? And I want to ask you a special favor as well today. Would you go on Amazon and leave a review about the book? Listen, the more people that are able to leave reviews, the book goes up and up and up. And so I want to urge you to do that and share it with people again and again and again. And I just got to 
great word here even this morning as I am taping this podcast right before I began. Uh, now, Uversion has also approved uh, seven days to lead. Seven devotions to lead are now can be found on Uversion. I want to urge you to go to Uversion, and I want you to look this up. Seven devotions to lead and it's on audio it's also in something you can read or do both simultaneously and it urge you to share that as well because it's taken from day by day and night by night and that's the way it will be uh, shared as well but i want to urge you that uh, these are written specifically for this kind of venue and this is another way you can deepen your commitment to be all that you can be. So share that, if you would, please, with friends who are involved in the Uversion uh, matters of Bible study and all the things that they offer, which are plentiful and global with millions and millions of people around the world. Now, listen, I want to urge you to do one other thing. We don't ever take time to do all this house cleaning stuff, but I'm going to do it today. I need you to really consider subscribing to this podcast. I want to urge you to share the podcast. Would you post about the podcast? Would you rate the po- the, the podcast? Give us a five-star rating. All of those matters are important, and I don't get into understanding all of those matters, and I just know it's valuable, and it's important. And it sends the entire rating up, which means that there will be more people to be able to see it, to hear it, to watch it. And I want to urge you to encourage people. You can get this podcast every week. You can see it on YouTube. You can also hear it on any podcast platform or You can just simply go to RonnieFloyd.com or FourLeaders.com, scroll down on the home page, and there you're given an option to watch it or you're given an option to listen to it. And so please share there. And There's a lot of stuff to see on that and hope that you will spend some time on those websites as well. Now let's go back to what is most important today. And what's most important today is the subject at hand. Building a family is more important than building a career. Do you believe that? I mean, you know, it helps if you believe that. You say, well, Ron, I don't know if I really believe it all the way, but I'd like to believe it. I understand that. I really do. I know what it's like to have a lot of zeal. I know what it's like to be filled with vision. I know what it's like to lead. I know what it's like to to be able to have a family. I I, I had two boys uh, in our immediate family. Gina and I had the privilege to have them. Now we have seven grandchildren. Things have changed. And, you know, this is just the way it works. And I want to urge all of us today to understand the value, I mean, the real value of things like we're talking about today. You know, when you think about this, I get asked this question almost everywhere I go. Recently, I was teaching a large church's uh, staff team, and there were about 12 or 15 people around the room, some of their key leaders. And they asked me this question then, and I get asked this question all the time. How do you balance work life and family? Listen, I don't know if there's an easy answer to that. And I just think it's important that you realize that there are seasons in anyone's job and there are seasons in everyone's family. And it's important that you harmonize those as much as possible. But it starts with a mindset. And the mindset has to be, I am more committed to building my family than I am building a career. Oftentimes, people think when we talk about the subject that we are condemning a career. Absolutely not. I mean, we all have moments of of ascending in our profession or our vocation, and we desire to see uh, 
God use us in greater ways. I, I desire that today. That's why I've asked you to share some of the things that I know can help people because it, it helps me to be fulfilled to be able to empower and develop people. I believe deeply in developing other people. So, you know, all this talk about family and marriage and career, let's try to put that together today. I'm going to really try to, to go to the heart of some of these matters. And I, I, if you're, if you're note-taking or you want to take some notes in the future about what I'm going to share, I really believe it would be helpful for you. And I hope that you will take some time and you may even want to listen to this podcast with your spouse or with your family, or you may want to share it with friends at work or church, wherever you are uh, involved in life, because this is something that people wrestle with every day. And there are no easy answers. Did you hear what I just said? But what I'm going to try to do is to give to you some things that you and I need to value. You see, I get asked this subject so often that I spent some time and I wrote down some values that we built this entire concept, this principle, this conviction for us that we are going to be more committed to building a family than we are building a career. Now, I want to push rewind for a moment, and I'm talking about rewind when we were just young adults in our late 20s, and we had two children at home. And I want to tell you a story, and this is a true story. It is an accurate story. We were in serving in a church in Texas. The Lord was blessing greatly. Now, it was a challenge along the way. I know that. But you know what? The Lord was doing some great things. And I was rushing home so I could see Gina and the boys before I was going to go back to the church for a for a meeting that I knew was not going to necessarily be a great meeting. Uh, I wasn't looking forward to going, but I felt so strong that I remember stopping at a stop sign. And it's like the Holy Spirit just said to me, stop sacrificing your family on the altar of ministry success. Did you hear that statement? Stop sacrificing your family on the altar of ministry success. You say, well, how did you deal with uh, going back to the meeting? I went back to the meeting. It's my responsibilities. But that was a turning point in my life. It was such a turning point that it really helped us rearrange our entire lives as a family and we're going to talk about some of that today. But everyone has to come to a moment, to a time. Yes, I want to be successful. I, I, would, be, I would be very untruthful with you if I did not want to be successful. I do want to be successful. You want to be successful. You want to, you want to be accomplished in your career, in your vocation. And you should. You should want to do the very best you can do. But listen, your family is more important than that. And so what we must do is to develop some things that we value, some anchors we're going to build it all upon so we can do it in the right way to try to bring everything into balance, recalibrating everything, and giving it a shot to try to raise a godly family, have a godly marriage, have godly children in the midst of enormous challenges in the career that each one of us may face. They're all different. There's no challenge. There's no trial alike. They come in all shapes and colors and sizes. We know that, but they're real to us. So let's talk about those values. First of all, I want to encourage you to develop 
this value. The value of prayer. The value of prayer. You see, prayer is as much listening to God as it is talking to God. Prayer is when you communicate with God, but He also communicates to you. Now, how does God communicate to you? He communicates to you through this book. It's called the Bible. And he uses this book to do that. We've talked about this on this podcast before. But we need to value prayer. That time where we spend moments with God in prayer. But what do I mean about that within your family? How does that affect and bring about that I'm going to be more committed to building a family than I am to my career? Here's what I know. You will never succeed. You will never succeed in marriage, family, and even career without prayer. Prayer is important for all those things. So I want to encourage you, what do I mean by valuing prayer? I'll go straight to the heart of it. First, pray for every member of your family specifically. Call every child's name out before God every day. Pray for your spouse. If you're a single mom or a single dad, then you pray for those children. And you pray for yourself to be able to know what to do and how to do that. And to be everything you need to do. And those of us that are now in the grandparenting stage, we need to do that not only for our children and their spouses, but we need to do it for our grandchildren. So you pray for every one of those people by name every day. Then I want to encourage you to put on the armor of God for them. You say, what is the armor of God? If you look in the book of Ephesians in chapter number 6, verse 10 through 20, you hear God speaking to us about putting on the armor of God. You see, we're in a fight. We're in a battle. Satan wants to destroy your marriage. Satan wants to destroy your kids. He wants to destroy your grandchildren. And you've got to move your prayer life to a level where you understand he plays for keeps. But God is greater than him. And you need to talk to God about this. And you need to put on the full armor of God for your family. I do that every morning. What is that full armor of God? Listen. The helmet of salvation on our heads. The breastplate of righteousness over our, over our breast. The loins of truth. In our bodies, gird up with loins of truth, God's truth, shodding our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In one hand, we hold the shield of faith. In the other hand, we hold the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God, the Bible. And then we do all of that to pray for one another and to be faithful in calling those names out to God. So you need to value prayer. Pray your children through challenging times. Pray your marriage through challenging moments and experiences. Pray about yourself, because your attitude is key to all of this. The second value I believe we need to have is we need to value marriage. We need to value marriage. The greatest thing you can do for your family is to have a healthy marriage. Have a flourishing marriage. There's nothing greater than knowing that when you go home at night, you have a spouse, a happy spouse, a pleasant spouse awaiting you when you go home. Try your best to nourish that marriage. For us, when I had that that life-changing moment for me in my 20s. I'll tell you what I did. I started creating a day every week where I spent that day with Gina. That's right. I created a day where we spent a day with, with Gina and our boys. And we did that all of those years. Now, once the boys went to school 
and it was not summer, obviously, they were not a part of that. But we still did that together. Creating that day made it like it doesn't matter what goes on during the week. We know we have that day is going to be our day together. You can also, many people do this, you create a date night. A night where it's just for you and your spouse. That's important. I want to urge you also, when you think about marriage and building your marriage to be strong, participate in a marriage conference. Gina and I, we not only uh, had marriage conference for, for our family, excuse me, for the families of our church for years, but we would go there. We'd sit on the front row of those, and we went to several of them. I mean, how can I expect the people of my church to not do or to do what I'm not, what I'm not willing to do? Well, we did that every time. We modeled that. We believed in that. And quite honestly, we knew that we needed it. Experiences like that, whatever they may be, you take advantage of them and you let God speak to your heart and let him nourish and flourish your marriage. So first, value prayer. Secondly, value marriage. And the third value is to value church. Value church. Let me say it this way. We need each other. That's right. And the church is there to help us accomplish family life, help us accomplish to have a, a successful marriage, a meaningful walk with Christ. Anything they can do to encourage us to do those matters are very, very important. So I want to urge you today to understand how important all of this is and never underestimate that. Be a part of weekly worship services. You have to understand how in the world can the church help you if you're not at the church? Listen, it's not about watching online. If you're sick, that's one thing. Watch online. But get yourself to the church house. Get yourself with the people of God. Get engaged with people even beyond the Sunday morning experience. Be involved in your church. Raise your children to be a part of the church. It was never an option for us. I mean, I'm telling you, parents, listen, your children need to be involved. And your students, your high school students, college students, they need to be involved in church. They need to go to camp. They need to go to vacation Bible school. They need to go to anything that will help them and nourish them in their faith. We all need the church. The church can be a tremendous oasis, a spiritual oasis for our family. And you know what? That's one thing you can do together. That's right. And you can't do that if dad's not willing to be the leader. Step up, dad. Mom, be willing to help lead that. Do what you can. You be faithful. You say, well, I'm tired on Sundays. Get over it. Get over it. Listen, you are there to lead. Make a difference. Make a difference. And you need the church. It's important. And we all need the church. So value the church. If I'm going to be able to build a family... And that family is going to be more important than even my career. Then I've got to have voices in my ear challenging me to have a healthy spiritual life, to have a healthy marriage, to have a healthy family. And no one should do that and be more effective in doing that than a local church. And parents, whatever it's worth, you've got to figure this out. And so please do it, and you lead the way. There's a fourth value that I think is important, and that is valuing mentoring with general accountability. Valuing mentoring with gentle accountability. In other words, when you have your children, what do you do with them? What do you teach them? I mean, you teach them how to shoot a basketball, you teach them 
how to walk along the way. You teach them how to throw a football and catch a football. You teach them uh, ballet. You teach them how to dance or you teach them various things in life. And all of those things are good. But listen, as a parent, you need to also teach them how to walk with God. You need to teach them how to walk with Jesus Christ. You need to teach them what it means to be what God wants you to be in your life. All of those things are important. Every one of those things are important. I taught my boys both how to have a quiet time. And they were just young boys. I mean, really young. You say, well, man, you are a ruler. No, I wasn't a ruler, but it, I was accountable to God. If I do not teach them how to walk with the Lord every day, how to read their Bible, how to pray, how to be concerned, how in the world were they going to do that? I mean, they can't and they won't. We need to understand. We must be able to train up and mentor our children and grandchildren over those kinds of matters. So teach your children how to be leaders. I talked to my boys both about what it means to lead. I encourage them to be leaders. I believe that it's important that they do that. Mentor them in their relationships. Mentor them in their friendships. Mentor them in their dating. I tell my grandchildren to this day, again and again and again, almost every time I see them, you remember this. You will become what your friends are. The people you hang out with will determine what you become. So folks, I just want to encourage all of us today. We've got to be willing to pay the price. And we've got to be willing to value mentoring with gentle accountability. And parents, I want to remind all of you about something about this. It's very, very important. And I really think we're missing this in a major, major way. And it's this. Parents, you are not running to be a parent. This is not about you being politically cool with your kids. You have already been elected to be the parent. That's right. God gave you those children. And you need to be able to guide those children, lead those children, and everything is not up to them, their decision-making mode or what they feel like they need to do or want to do or they don't want to do. You have got to mentor them, help them along the way, because if you don't, no one else is. And so this is something only a parent is able to do. So when we're talking about this matter of how to build a family and why it is more important to build a family than it is a career, let me remind you where we've been. First of all, value prayer. Secondly, value marriage. Thirdly, value church. Fourth, value mentoring with general accountability. Let's talk about the fifth thing, value consistency. Value consistency. Consistency is really, really important. And so many people are inconsistent in the way they raise their children and they're inconsistent as a family. Consistency builds godly children. And listen carefully, inconsistency does not add to building a godly child. Those children need to see you being consistent, living consistent, doing what you say you're going to do. And so as a parent, how does that, how does that all come up to be? And what do we do about that? Well, it's important, I think, to be honest with them consistently. Be honest with them consistently. And be consistent in your disciplining them. You can't expect... If you're going to do it one day, you're not going to do it the most. How are they supposed to know how to live? You've got to be consistent in your discipline. You have to be consistent in your mentoring. And be consistent with your schedule as a family as much as possible. If you've assigned a night where you're going to all go out to dinner every week, then listen, be consistent with that. And it's important that you do that. You see, if you do not value and prioritize family, 
They will not either. How are they going to know how to raise their own family if you let them, if you just let them do what they want to do? And it's important that you raise your family to believe this. We are a Christian family. This is not a, us becoming what that family does over there, or this family over here does this, or these kids go do this, or this family goes and does this. No, 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 no. No, we're a Christian family. And we go to church together. We're going to live consistently together. We're going to be what God wants us to be. And so it's important that you value consistency. Number six, if Value communication. Value communication. Attempt to build a climate and a culture in your family where your children would tell you anything. Anything. And you're willing to hear it without judging them immediately. You see, the real challenge of being a parent is God wants you to love them unconditionally he wants you to love them willfully. He wants you to love them sacrificially the same way God loves you. And that's the way God loves all of us. And we need to love our own children that way. Uh, that doesn't mean we just never discipline in them. No, there are times we have to give tough love. There are times we have to be uh, call things up. There are times that, that we will have to deal with certain decisions that they, that they have made that may not be the healthiest decision. But here, listen carefully. Do everything you can to tell your children something like this on a continual basis. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. And you say it again and again and again. And you tell them all things are possible with God. You tell them I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you tell them we believe in you. We believe in you. We believe in you. Some families say, you know what, we're going to have dinner together. And as we have dinner together, you know, we're going to try to do this every day or we're going to try to do it several nights a week. You know, that's a tremendous time to communicate with one another. But you can't communicate with one another if you're on your phone the entire time. Families need to take their phone many, many times during those dinner seasons and nights and turn it upside down and you tell your child, we're not going to listen to our phones for a while. We'll deal with that later. And parents, you cannot do yours and then tell your kids they can't do theirs. Again, consistency. Value consistency and value communication. And finally, I just want to urge you to value vacations. You see, having a vacation is very, very important. And having your family and a regularity of doing that is also very important. Time away with your family is valuable. Creating experiences, whether they cost little or they cost more, you do it at the level you are financially. Don't go into debt over taking your family on a vacation. No, don't do that. That's not wise at all. But listen, you can do a lot of things that don't cost a lot of money. But you can do a lot of things that do cost a great deal of money. We would always try to take off on spring break. In fact, we went skiing together for many, many years, probably 15 plus years in a row. We would go skiing together on spring break. We would always take a family vacation in the summer. And we would always take a family time away between Christmas and New Year's. Listen, it's very important you have consistency and you value that time and make it special for everyone there in your family. I know, you know, all of this can become real challenging. But I want to remind all of us today of something I learned years and years ago and I had somebody tell me this about being a parent. And it's so true. But it's true about every level of life. Here it is. 
The days are long, but the time is fast. Oh, days can be very long, long, challenging, deep, disheartening, discouraging. The days are long, but the time is fast. I want to urge you to understand you have one shot with your family. One. One shot. I hope that you'll make it count. You have one shot with your marriage. Make it count. You have one shot with your children. Make it count. If you make a mistake, apologize and go forward. You do what you can to build a family because building a family is more important than building a career. You say, Ronnie, can I do both? Yes, you can. But you have to be very intentional in doing it. And you've got to teach your family that things come in seasons. And there are seasons that are going to be very demanding, but there are also seasons that are not going to be as demanding. And you take advantage of those days that you have together, whether it be one day or uh, during the week as we did, or however you try to navigate that. It's got to fit your life. It's got to fit you. It's got to fit your family. But all I know is it is important. I close with this today. None of us live in a perfect world. And none of us are perfect. It's all about your attitude. It's all about your priorities. And your attitude and your priority is what I'm encouraging you to think about today. On this subject, building a family is more important than building a career. When I look back and I think about that, I have no regrets on that with my children. I really don't. I mean, I don't have a regrets about that with my marriage because we were very committed to making it work. And God has been gracious and God has been good. You see, here's what it takes. It takes prayer and the grace of God, the mercy of God. And because we're not going to ever be the perfect parents. We're never going to be the perfect people. But God is, and God can see us through. I really want to thank you for being on the podcast today with me. I want to urge you again, would you tell others about it? Would you post it on your social media page? Would you do everything you can to even rate it along the way? Let us know and let us hear from you. And also, don't forget, day by day and night by night, 365 morning and evening devotions. I hope that you will order yours today on Amazon and you will review it, you will rate it, and you will tell others about it and gift it to many people in the future. Have a great day and we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. For more information on Ronnie Floyd, go to fourleaders.com. We'll see you next time.